This video is going to cover some bug fixes for the chat room application. One of the things that I ran into was that active storage doesn't play nice with transaction locks, which was breaking the message attachments. So we're going to fix that. The other thing is when I tried to run the server this morning, uh, it completely blew up and it's explaining about, or it's complaining about the uh, spell checkers, I guess, not working. And it looks like something got out of date. So we're going to update the Ruby version too, because I figured that's probably a good thing to learn how to do. So we're going to exit out of the full screen and come over into our gem file. And in our gem file, we just want to change this to, I think it's version 3.1.0. And I can just type, because I have RVM installed, I can type RVM list. And yeah, it looks like 3.1 is the one that I'm using. So I'm going to just upgrade this. So we have it set to 3.1. If we now run a bundle install, you'll see your Ruby version is 3.0.3, but your gem file specified 3.1.0. So although we changed it in here, we still have to tell RVM to use the 3.1. So for that, we can say RVM use 3.1.0. Now we can do a bundle update command, and this will grab our gems and it'll update for us. And you can see here that this has already been done on my demo application. Uh, but we can now close this. And if we now try to run a Rails S command, the application starts up just like it should. So we can now open it, log in, start chatting, and then we'll just uh, grab a message here. So this is a chat with John Doe. And I'm going to try to attach an image. And this was where I was running into some issues. If I try to send this, the process was throwing a file not found error. And this is really bizarre because we didn't change any of the logic in here. But what I realized later, uh, no pun intended, is that our, uh, what is it? Our chat room, when it does the broadcast, it does a broadcast append to room. And what can happen is when you do the uh, update to the parent room, I believe, this will cause a transaction lock. And because your file is uh, still being uploaded, I think the after create commit might fire and then maybe this causes the database to get locked. So changing this from a broadcast append to to a broadcast append later to, this seemed to entirely resolve the issue. Now it's not gonna resolve this issue because the file still isn't found, but uh, what we can do is we can destroy this and then we can try it again. And so far I haven't run into the same problem again yet. So we're going to take this target and just call dot destroy on it, which will delete that attachment. We can then refresh. And now we can try to attach like some images again, and we'll see if this causes it to break. And as far as I can tell, I haven't had this break a single time yet. So that's one thing to take a look at. Now, the other thing is when we were uploading stuff like videos, uh, and excuse my videos folder, it's currently full of a whole bunch of recordings. But if I grab like a video, an audio file, and then two of the cat pictures again, and I upload all of these and I click send, our scroll bar gets pushed up as these things pop into frame. So the more attachments you have, the more out of sync your scroll bar gets. And at first I thought that was a JavaScript issue, but then I thought, how do other like applications deal with this? And the way that they deal with this is actually in, let's see, in the messages here, you have all of these checks for which type of attachment it is. And what you can do is you can set each of these to have a static size for the CSS because the CSS is gonna pop in right away. And then the image or the video tag will pop into that container, but it won't, uh, it won't cause it to resize because whenever this pops in, it'll have a maximum size of whatever the CSS is set to. So we're also going to take a look at how to set that. Uh, and we're also going to grab this and put it inside of a partial just to clean this up a bit. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to say render messages, oops, messages slash attachments. And I'm going to pass in the message, which is a message. We can come over here to our messages, new file, underscore attachments.html.erb, paste in our attachments, refresh the page just to make sure we didn't break anything. And then we can uh, full screen this. We're gonna start by giving this a row. Oops, by giving this a row. Because we want this to have a set size, we also want it to span a little bit better. 
So let me move this up actually, just one more. I don't know what's happening with my VS code. Then we're gonna refresh. You can see it sort of messes with the offset a little bit, but overall nothing really changes here. We can then come into our image attachment and we can give this a div. We're gonna give it a, what did I call it? Message dash image and dot call dash six. I actually don't think that's right. So what we'll do is we'll grab the message image and we'll just put this as a class on the image tag. So this is gonna cause it to have at most two images in a row. You can come in here and refresh and you can see here, they're a little bit bunched up, but that's the basic idea. And we still have to, of course, give this a class and stuff to make it look a little bit better. We're then gonna come into the video. And for this one, we're actually gonna give it a dot call dash 12. We don't really want two videos on the same line. Of course, you could have that, but I prefer not to. As for the style, we're gonna get rid of that. And instead, we're gonna give this a class of message-video. And for all of these, we're not putting the class on the div because we want our CSS to affect the actual thing inside of the div. We're then gonna grab this call-12, paste it in here, close the div, save this. Uh, but we do want another class here for the message-audio. And then for the last one here, we'll do another .call-12. For this one, we want to give this a class instead of this styling, where we say this is a message dash file. We can save that. Now, if we refresh, uh, we'll probably break a whole bunch of stuff. Our video goes full screen and you can see here because the video is so big, it causes the scroll to start way up there. Now we can come into our CSS. So we're gonna come into style sheets and chat room, I think, oops, chat room. And you know the drill, I don't really like to cover CSS. So we're gonna paste it in and we're just gonna talk about it because you probably don't care too much about how this works. So what we paste in is a class for each of the things we just declared. For the image, we give it a width and a height just to force it to have a set size. The width probably isn't required, uh, but the height you're gonna want to keep. The video is set to 150 by 150 as well, and we're giving them all a padding and margin of zero just to sort of fix the offsets a bit. For the audio, we set the height to be 50 pixels and the width is just 100% because the audio is just a little progress bar, which I can show you maybe if I scroll up enough. It's just this little progress bar here. The last thing we have is the message file, which is just gonna be like a text link almost. And actually I can just attach one of those. So here I've attached my uh, web safe resume and I can click send. I can say, hey, can I has job please? And if I highlight it, you'll see it's just a link to the actual file that I can open in a new tab if I want to and it'll prompt a download link. By having all of these now, if we come in here and we refresh, it should cause things to look a little bit differently. So now our link here, or our file is just this uh, white link. The other thing you'll notice is the video is now approximately like most of the size of the container. You might wanna give it a bit of an offset. And I think this is actually why in our uh, attachments, I didn't have this attached to the image itself. So if we take this and we get rid of this and we just pop it into our class here, I think this causes the images to look a little bit better. Yeah, so now the images aren't uh, super bunched up together, but you still need to set like a bit of an offset to make sure that they fit in here. Okay, so I actually went through and I changed some stuff. Uh, what we have now is the div for the row ends right here and the div for the call-12 ends right here. The only thing that has an outer container is the image now, which just has a message image container, and then it has a class of message image. So everything only has one call because I decided it looked a little bit better. You still wanna style this a bit, but you sort of get the idea of what I'm going for. And then in the actual chat room, this is what the CSS looks like now. So the message container has a width and a height of 150, or the message image container. And the message image has a width of auto and a height of 150 pixels with a size of contain, position center, and repeat is no repeat. And that just causes everything to sort of stack up like this. The important thing though is if we you know, refresh the page because the CSS pops in so quickly, that 
you're not going to run into issues with the size there. And we can move between all of these and it'll work just fine and it'll send us to the bottom in each of them. And of course, as we scroll up, it'll also fix some of the issues with scrolling up. And you can see even when you have a broken image, it still takes up the size. So I like that a little bit better. The last thing is the uh, this message right here currently doesn't work. So we're going to change it until I come up with a better solution for the sender. So we can just come into, where is it? I think it's our users and our last message. Because right now, I had a hunch this wasn't gonna work in the last video, but basically we're not actually sending the U from the current user. So it's just gonna be anytime anyone sends a message, it's gonna say U for everyone. So we're just gonna leave it as the sender email for now. Okay, apparently that tab just didn't wanna work. I'll click start chatting and I'll come over to the message with myself. And what I'll do is I'll say, hello, question mark. And it'll just say John Doe for both of us for now. This We can fix this in a future episode, but for now, this is just a quick fix to make it less uh, inconsistent. And of course, everything is still sending us to the bottom of the chat room unless we scroll up a whole bunch and then we can say hello and it won't send us back down. So, you know, everything's working a lot more smoothly with these fixes, but that's going to do it for this video. If you're interested in doing some authentication with Devise through an API that would also work for an application like this that might just also have an API where you can log into both, I have a video covering the Doorkeeper gem, which I'll link to on the screen right now.